The federal government has rolled out a plan to get the economy back on track after the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic affected the price of oil, the mainstay of Nigeria's revenue. This led to the reworking of the 2020 budget by the executive arm of government to reflect the current economic realities. The revised budget of 10.810 trillion naira was passed by the National Assembly last week. Now, President Mohamed Buhari set up the Economic Sustainability Committee, which is chaired by Vice President Yemi to find ways to get the economy back on track following the economic havoc wrecked by COVID-19. In its report, the Economic Sustainability Committee rolled out a number of solutions across the different sectors of the economy. The plan is based on real sector measures, fiscal and monetary measures, and implementation. Now, Gospel Eden joins me, an economist, to take a look at all of this. Good morning, Mr. Eden. Good morning, Gospel Obele. Gospel Obele, I apologize profusely. How are you today? Very fine, thank you. All right, thanks for joining us. Now, looking at the economic recovery plan, how practicable are these strategies, if I may ask you? All right, so to a very large extent, um, these are um, strategies that have been suggested or, or put in place in several other recovery plans in one way or the other. And um, they are not really, really, really um, new plans in sort of trying to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. However, it's, the, the vulnerability and the level of shock we are taking right now in the Nigerian economy is largely because a lot of these things were not done in the past. For instance, for us, successfully putting up isolation center sounds like a big win. When we are supposed to primarily have a thriving Healthcare. You know, when you compare that to countries abroad, you realize that there's a thriving healthcare, and their isolation centers or overflows are isolation centers are usually built from the, on the overflow to take to take um, um, the overflow. So what we have currently is a situation where we've not been able to execute most of our plans in the past effectively, and now we are now we would like to what uh, way down below ground zero. So they are not new, that's what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's largely, um, it's heavy on implementation, it largely depends on implementation. And for us, that questions on the capacity of institutions and the funding, the right funding in the right places over a period of time and too rigorous and scientific use of these processes to ensure that there's improvement on where it matters most to the average Nigeria and to the priority sectors. So it's not really a matter of what is being written new or what is not. To a large extent, these are information in one way or another that are being repetitive in different recovery documents. So it's largely dependent on the implementation right. this time around. Gospel, let's take a look at the healthcare sector. Yeah? Shouldn't that be given back to the citizens rather than as a source of revenue? What's your thought? Um, well, primarily, it's supposed to be that way, but um, the way the Nigerian economy is structured over the years, like I mentioned several times, there are many imbalances in the system, and there is a lot of fiscal indiscipline. So the cost from fiscal indiscipline, which is what we are suffering right now, uh, meaning high debt service and the pressure to get more revenue regardless, is being pushed you know, to citizens and is being pushed to, uh, uh, to other prices in the private sector. So we've, 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 out of our fiscal discipline, built a cost-driven economy. So what's going to happen is the health sector and other sectors that are supposed to be, um, quote and unquote, social amenities, you know, affordable social amenities to the mass um, Nigerians, you have Nigerians even paying for them in one way or the other. So there's pressure to increase taxes because oil prices are not increasing so fast and the pandemic seem not to go out soon, you know, would may not may not be fizzled out soon. So there's pressure to increase taxes and the government will use every opportunity to do that. And when you hear um, uh, non-oil revenue, non-oil revenue, it's not because we've expanded the productivity base of businesses in this country. No. It's because NDAs are putting more pressure on institutions, private institutions, to get out more revenue. So it's a revenue-driven economy and uh, not an, an ideally support-driven economy to enable businesses to thrive. And it's quite unfortunate where we are in. But now um, the government just has to raise revenue. Plus, the pressure will push, push the final consumers or the private sector. All right. Um, just on the heels of that conversation, are we expecting some tax burden with focus on VAT when many are dealing with economic hardship? Well, I, I won't be surprised if it's if it's um, if if it's still um, grossly implemented because 
um, to a large extent, if you look at the construct of the um, sustainability plan, the finance plan and if, the finance act and a few other acts were incorporated. So it's expected that corporates over time would have to, you know, yield back to the 7.5 VAC, VAT and the, and the likes. Um, well, it's, it's just the situation we find ourselves in, to be very honest. If we had properly unlocked our revenue streams from a productive, widespread productive base, not institutional revenues and pressure on the private sector just to get money out of them, we may probably have found an easier way to, you know, to fund this whole dynamics and uh, looming recession we find ourselves in. So it's quite unfortunate. Um, yes, it will bring more economic hardship, but guess what? That economic hardship will be transferred to the final consumer. So, I mean, it's just very simple mathematics. Once you increase the tax body of a producer, he will increase the cost of the price because he will shift that tax body to the, we put the tax body on the cost of the product. You know, so it means that consumers will have to pay more for services, but consumers will have to pay more for product. And then with social distancing and the likes, um, to be quite honest, the story is not really a good one in the long term. Right. Agriculture seems a bit promising this time and looks practicable. But how are we going to really achieve farm to table as an economist? How do you see these dynamics going to play out? Yes, when I, when I read the plan and I, and I saw um, the president or the, um, the information right there that we need to produce what we eat and the likes, you know, it's, this whole thing has just been reiterated in different ways. This has always been the recommendation, you know, both from an economist perspective and from um, um, different stakeholders as pressure groups, that we need to begin to produce what we eat. You know, it's kind of pertinent that when we get to the roadblock, that we begin to put these things as if they are new information on the plan. But to be honest, we are not. You cannot produce what you will eat at the level of quality and quantity. You know that the economy needs, despite you know uh, taking cognizance of its vastly growing population, when you don't have strong infrastructural facilities, all right, when you don't have um, um, the right enablers or the drivers. So I mean, it, we are just moving in a vicious cycle, uh, uh, to be quite honest, of stagnation, right? Because what you now have is a situation where the, the quality food or the right the, the foods with the right quality that are being sold in the market are more expensive, right? So we need to find a way to rework that value chain and the Alabia infrastructure issue, right? Infrastructure funding and access to market and even technology, right? So a lot more has to be done in the background. This same conversation can be likened to the era of the smuggling and the likes, right? If you cannot fix the internal systems to, be, to ensure that you can produce the food you eat, then uh, no matter whatever name you call the document, sustainability or not, we may not be able to achieve that. So there has to be the right enablers and the right drivers for us to be at least to be able to produce what we eat. So there, there is a lot of conversation around this. That's why I mentioned earlier on that. Uh, well, yeah, there are plans, but to a very large extent, these plans have been repetitive in one way or the other. If you look at the ERGP, you find the same information. If you look at the Vision 2020, seven point agenda, you find the same information. The challenge is we're not being able to commit ourselves with the necessary fiscal discipline, the resources, the time, and institutional capacity to sit through a period of growth and investment, all right, so that we can arrive at these places earlier. So it's 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 um, quite hurtful still, but I hope that over time the right investments and the right enablers will be made so that we can get out of this in terms of a self-sustainable self-sustainable self manner, you know, for the average Nigerian to thrive to a large extent. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Gospel Obele Economist, for your interventions this morning. Thank you for having me.